All right, guys, welcome back, or uh, welcome. Yeah. Uh, this is part two of our DIY solar setup. Uh, we did part one. I'll put it here if you haven't seen it. Um, that was just the batteries. Um, this part, we're going to do everything else that goes with it. Uh, and then we'll probably do a part three where we get it installed on its board and get it all wired up and do some, you know, use case testing and... Um, uh, test all the individual, you know, items, make sure that they're working like they're supposed to, um, and, and that it's going to be a uh, fail-safe system, you know, if humanly possible. So let's um, get started with what we have on the table. Uh, we'll go through all of it a little bit and talk about some of the specs on it. What It's all based off of, I made this for for, for what I plan to do. That's the plan. So, uh, the only thing that's different on here is that we went with one 200 watt panel to start instead of two 100s. So, on the table here, we have our necessary components to get this together um, this off-grid solar power book if you can see that uh, was what i used to figure out the wiring sizes that i would need you know to carry the volt engine watts and you know and everything else the amps so this book was indispensable in um, helping me figure out how to put this together uh, the way I wanted it for what I thought I would use it for. So I'll leave a link for this book um, down in the uh, description. So if you do decide to do something like this or you do want to um, get involved in some kind of a DIY solar or want, just want to learn about solar, um, this is really an excellent book. Um, I'm not sponsored by this guy. Um, I just found the book. I thought the information was outstanding. Um, and I'll put an Amazon link down below you know if you do buy it through the amazon link i make a little something off it but uh, same is going to go with everything else that's on here when you guys use those links down there even if you don't buy um the actual product that you linked in with and you buy some groceries i still get a little something for that so that's the best way to help the channel because um you were going to go there anyway <laughs> so if you're going to go there and buy something go through one of the links and it just you know it's like pennies from heaven it adds up so anyway can't recommend it enough so these are our large uh, MIDI fuse, um, and these are going to be the fuses that are going to go inside of the um, Lynx distributor to connect the circuits. And so we have an assortment because I wasn't sure what I really wanted to have. So we've got some 60s, some 40s, and then we have a uh, 250 uh, here somewhere, that one, um, that's for the main power uh, and then we also have this um, it's kind of like a little capacitor you can see that maybe um, we're going to use this to to discharge into the inverter when we first connect um, the paddle, uh, positive power to it so you'll take this and you'll connect the positive power to this and then this to the positive power of the uh, inverter and just hold it there for five or ten seconds and then that helps um, when you go to connect the positive, you don't get that spark like we're all used to seeing when you connect a, a positive uh, connection on a battery. This is a 250 amp fuse block there. It's a Bojack. In conjunction with that, we will have our cutoff switch right there. Next thing that we have is we have our, um, we'll save the wiring stuff for last. We're using the uh, uh, Victro uh, Victron Energy, the MPPT 100 by 30. This is also one of the areas where we talked about that because it's not a budget system, you can buy budget MPPT controllers for um, you know, 30 and 40 bucks. Uh, I've seen them. So um, it's just not a place that I felt like I would want to um, cheap out, you know. Uh, there's just certain areas in here that I, there's, there, where I knew I could, you know, do some cost saving. Um, so this is not one of them. <laughs> so these are quite, quite pricey, 
but uh, in my opinion, worth every penny. Again, Bluetooth again on the app. So, so I've tried to make sure that all this stuff was Bluetooth. Um, so I could just, you know, check it from my phone. I didn't have to come in and uh, look at some of the other items that we're going to show you. Uh, next up, speaking of power, is this is um, Renogy. So Renogy is a uh, very respected name in the solar industry. Um, they do a vast majority that I've seen anyway is for um, uh, RVs and the like. So they do a ton of stuff with them. This is actually a shunt. And then a shunt basically tells you the stage, uh, state of the battery. So you can see that. So this is the shunt. This goes in line um, off your negative post. And then this little screen connects to this and it tells everything about what's happening with the batteries how much they're getting into them how much is coming out of them so uh the victron makes one the, but theirs comes in two pieces where it's the shunt is one piece the gauge is another piece um, each one of those pieces in victron are uh, over 100 bucks really close to 100 bucks each so you're talking about 200 and some dollars this setup from renogy uh, I think is about 89 bucks for both pieces. So this is one of the places where I thought, okay, I can, I can save a few bucks and make it a little bit more affordable. We have our uh, circuit breaker for the solar. So the uh, solar panels um, will come right into here and then there'll be a breaker for it. And then they'll come out of here and they'll go into the MPPT controller uh, to generate power. Um, so again, another thing you want to have, you want to be able to uh, cut the power off in case you're going to have to work on it um, or do anything really, any kind of maintenance or you don't want to have that um, solar energy pumping straight in there. So another fail safe. Uh, this is a great little part. It's not expensive. Um, I recommend you use it. So Next is our, this is our battery charger. This is how we are going to keep the, um, the batteries charged up when there's no solar, you know, that we're using. So it's just a, a dual purpose setup. So I can have this as a wall charger. We'll have it attached. It can trickle charge the batteries and so can the um, solar. They do have uh, some other options uh, online that um, are lithium battery friendly. You have to make sure they are if you're using lithiums. Um, that uh, I think I had one actually at one point before I decided to go with this just so I could again see it on the app. Uh, I think you can get it for uh, what, 45 bucks for, well, I forgot who the brand was, but there's a few brands out there that are kind of solid in the, in the overseas brands that uh, you can get some stuff from. Okay, so next up is our uh, Lynx distributor. This is also another Victron product. This uh, is an absolute splurge. You do not need to have this. Um, and you can go with just a standard bus bar, uh, positive and negative. This I did just because I think I have some future plans for this system. Um, and so I don't want to have open bus bars in that future plan. So I want to have something where they're covered uh, nice and neat. And so this is, where the, this is where the power comes in on your positive sides for everything. This is your negative sides. And then our, our fuses that we talked about go between the two, the two posts just like that. So again, uh, splurge, you do not need this. I will link it, and if you want to buy it, great. But um, I'll also link uh, down there for you uh, just some regular bus bars, the ones that I had in my possession uh, before I saw this thing, and I was like, oh, I think I want that. Um, so that's that. Um, then we have the second heart of the system after the batteries is the Renogy 2000 watt inverter so this one is a pure sign inverter uh, it's 12 volt dc or 110 volt ac 60 hertz um, i'll get the stats for some of this stuff um, when we hook everything up and start talking about what we're draining right now but right now i'm just going through uh, the parts uh, this is a uh, good inverter um, like i said there's victron makes an inverter the same Victron inverter is almost three times the cost of this. Um, I think it is three times the cost of this, if not even more. 
Um, but this was a place where I felt like if we chose a solid brand, uh, which Renogy is, um, and there's some other uh, solid brands out there that you could choose from um, that are, would be even considered better than Renogy, but um, maybe not quite as good as Victron. It just depends on who you are and what you need. And like I said, I'm not an expert. So um, this was just a good, solid uh, choice for me for the budget that I was working with uh, to make this happen. And, and it'll do everything that I need it to do. And when you read the reviews and everything on it, um, it's a great unit. Uh, we haven't had, we, there hasn't been um, that much negativity. There's always negativity. There's always somebody whining about something. Um, so, you know, it doesn't get a perfect five-star rating. But anyway, that's that. Okay, so after that comes the wiring. So we have um, the few things that I picked up on through the book is that you want to have good copper wiring, not the tinned copper, um, uh, not the super cheap stuff. Um, you know, you get on there and say, okay, show me. I think this is a, this is a six AWG here. Yeah. Um, you know, show me the six stuff and you get some really cheap stuff and then you get the tin stuff. Um, and then you have to keep looking, you know, and you have to find the right price point to, you know, so instead of this roll being, you know, the cheapest version is $10. Um, you know, try to find the one I, I know it's counterintuitive, but because wiring is so important and it is, um, can be a main, uh, major, uh, fail point and fire. Um, you don't want to cheap out on the wire. So, uh, buy the best you can afford on it. And also you want to make sure that you buy bigger than you need. Again, we talked about scalability, um, and the bigger the wire, the easier things work. Wire doesn't heat up. It doesn't, you know, so if you take, you know, uh, try to run uh, a bunch of power, for example, let's just say we're going to run the two batteries um, in parallel to that inverter. Well, you try to run it through this little wire, this wire is going to get smoking hot. And I wouldn't be surprised if it started to melt just because it's not uh, rated for that much power. And you can get those charts there online and they're in that book. I, I keep pointing to the book, but it's, it's a good resource if you're going to do this. Um, these are the wires, the battery wires that we'll be using. But this is one aught. And so these are the two that we'll use to actually connect the two batteries together in parallel. Uh, we use these two here. And then these two are also one aught. And then this is what is going to go from the negative terminal to the negative side of the the Lynx distributor on the power co coming inside. And then we'll do the same thing with the positive. We also have more one aught. Um, if we had to go a lot, um, a lot farther. Okay, we're gonna like put the system here and then I want the batteries way over here. Um, I bought some extra, it's a welding wire and it's good copper wire. All right, so these are the actual wires um, for the solar panels. Ooh, in our pocket today for cutting is our uh, Spyderco Para 3 um, in the full Spidey blade. So we'll cut this guy loose because it's driving me nuts. Uh, these are uh, eight uh, AWG on the side, so they're a fairly they're a fairly thick wire um, because when you do the math about panels, this is the main wire that's got to come in. So if I want 400 watts, if I want multiple of these, um, then I need to be able to make sure I have um, good wire that's not going to drop power. On the way in and that's i guess my understanding of it is that if you go with real small wire on your solar panels um you know you already you already have efficiency issues with the solar panel but then the long run if it's especially if it's a long run these are 50 footers um, you'll lose power on the way in just because it's trying to push you know through a smaller wire and then if it's a bigger wire the power flows a little more easily there's all kinds of math things <laughs> involved in why that's the case and uh, I'm not a math teacher so we're not going to talk about them um, if you want to google it you can google it or you can get the book um, and then you'll need uh, from there you'll need a heavy set 
of cutters and this is for the uh, large wire if I need it um, we'll use that there these are just these are good to have anyway just for big wire um, and then this is the uh, crimping tool that we'll use to put the lugs on the ends of the wires because we are going to be cutting lots of little pieces out of those rolls to go from you know here to here and make all these little connections and so each time we do that we're going to have to actually put um, lugs on the wire so we've got the tool for that we have a bag of the lugs for that these are some other lugs for the uh, uh, eight, six gauge basically the exact same thing um, this tool will do all the sizes so we're not too worried there um, the one last thing that we really are missing here and it's a last minute addition I'll have it tomorrow um, are what are called uh, ferrules and so they take on the end of the wire it's a basically a little metal round ring that slides on it and then the, the little tool you squeeze it and it turns it square and then that way when you are um, inserting it into the power ports on each of the individual items um, you know they're, they're screwed down you know so you stick it in just like you would and then just screw it down um, there's actually a nice you know metal housing in there for the screw to really tighten down on and that is uh, almost mandatory in my opinion um, if you're gonna put this in a vehicle um, in a home situation or something that's not moving much um, you probably wouldn't have to worry about that but uh, I just decided I'm, I'm gonna worry about it and I'm just gonna do everything uh, in the best way possible um, and it doesn't co it cost an extra 30 bucks to get the the uh, ferrules and the tool to do it so uh, I think that's gonna be it on going through these parts uh, uh, hopefully that was enough information like I said we'll link everything in the bottom um, and like I said, I've talked about that book 50 times already. Highly recommend you get that book. If, you're watch if you take anything from this video, in my opinion, if you don't know much, get the book. You know, it was cheap, too. So um, uh, it was just a good read. But anyway, uh, oh, you know what? We never talked about the solar panel, which is here. This, I mean, we talked about it, but that's it right there. It's, it's a big panel. I'm not going to get it out of the box because it's easy to carry. The box has handles. It's easy for me to move it around. Um, so in our part three, uh, we will get everything on a two foot. It's going on a two foot by four foot piece of board. Uh, and that'll, we'll have it up here. Um, I need to paint that and everything and get it kind of ready to go. Um, and we will get everything wired up and we will uh, start putting the screws to the system and see what it can handle. So thanks for watching and uh, we will catch you guys on the next video.